Hi, and thanks for joining us. My name is David Penn. I'm the research analyst with the Finnovate Group. Joining me right now is Roland Verley. He's the founder and partner of Consulta EU, a European insurance advisory firm. Thanks for joining us. Hello, David. Uh, good afternoon. So first, let's go ahead and, and start with a little bit of background for folks who might not know very much about you. You're the founder and partner at Consulta EU. Can you tell us a little bit about the organization, why you founded the firm, and the work that you do? Sure. Um, Consulta.eu is a fairly new uh, boutique advisory firm for the European insurance industry. Uh, we are different, refreshing, highly competent, fun, value-driven and 100% customer focused, trying to help um, the insurance players in, in the transformation, innovation, and customer and employee value propositions. Excellent. That's definitely one of the things that we're hearing more and more about these days with InsureTech coming up and, and joining with FinTech. Now, you spent our first industry stage here yesterday. You were cheering uh, our InsureTech stage. Um, were there any presentations that really made an impact on you or anything that you found particularly interesting during that presentation? Well, there was two presentations in the morning I found quite interesting. There was Nikolai Shetkin's presentation on the platform economy, uh, which is highly relevant, obviously, for insurance. Sure. And, and we had a, a good debate in the afternoon mm -hmm. what that actually, where insurance industries might evolve into. So huh. that they might become platform providers and solution providers for platforms. Mm. And the industry as such may actually evaporate over time and morph into the platforms. So wow. uh, it, it's a bit of a scary. Uh, Sort on, on one hand, on the other hand, is a great opportunity for those who actually partner with the right platform providers mm -hmm. and they can actually grow and grasp new opportunities in the market. The other presentation I found quite inspiring was obviously Stephen from Bellingham's customer the day after tomorrow, and it's really sort of opening the eyes mm -hmm. where can actually digitalization uh, lead to and where are some of the players, especially in Asia, mm -hmm. what are they doing? Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that presentation. I, I caught that one too, and it was really fascinating. I think uh, a lot of the folks in the audience really, really found that one interesting as well. One thing I also wanted to ask you about has to do with the intersection of technology and insurance. Um, so what are some of the key ways that technology is changing insurance? There's been a lot of talk of reinventing insurance, for example, uh, that doesn't involve this technology. What do you think is going on there that's interesting? Well, I think there's probably three areas where technology is changing. First of all, they will primarily speed up the processes along the insurance value chain. Uh -huh. So they might, either it's distribution, underwriting, customer service, there's huge potentials on claims mm. just to make the process faster. Okay. With making it faster, second, it will become cheaper. It will drive down cost. You know? with uh, either through cheaper cloud solutions on the technology side, mm. through the use of uh, robotics, AI, etc. It will actually reduce the expense ratios, uh, on, and on the other hand, also the, the loss ratios with uh, prevention technologies. But I see also tremendous potential on the B2B side, and you know, for mm. the large B2B specialty insurance lines like Marine, uh, where you can actually okay. use satellite tracking, uh, blockchain contracts in much more in, uh, innovative ways around data analytics to be uh, to drive down the tremendous cost uh, of, of that industry. Interesting, interesting. One of the things that we hear a lot about in fintech that I'd like to sort of see how that works on the insurtech side has to do the relationship between incumbent players and sort of the upstart insurgent players. How does that relationship play out in the insurance field? I, I would say it's still a difficult relationship to, yeah. to make it work. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it's the same in the fintech space. Sure. This is one of the things Consulta.e is actually focusing on. We are working with startups. Uh, we are working with sort of uh, the, the industry leaders to bring them to better and match them and to make sure there's a win-win case for both of them. Mm -hmm. And to overcome that, actually, they need to become true partnerships. Uh, incumbents cannot see a startup just as a supplier. This mm. won't work. They will fail any procurement process. They will not tick the boxes which they need to tick. Uh, they really need to sort of nurture them. They need to see them as strategic partners. So bringing them together, speaking the same language, mm. speaking where, does, where is value added on both sides, and how can we make a win-win situation? I think that's that's the way to succeed. Yeah, excellent. And we can see it actually with some it's actually going much better than it was in the past. Oh, fantastic! Oh, progress is always good. Um, one last thing I wanted to touch on was something that you another discussion you were involved in, and it has to do with the difference between innovation teams and innovation cultures. And I thought that might be an interesting thing to sort of wrap things up with. What are the difference between those two concepts, and why is that an important difference you think to understand? People mixed the terms up a little bit. Mm. I think an innovation team is, is, is a one-off uh, sort of mm. attempt to, to build a, a sort of a, a diverse team with the right skills and mindset, right. for almost like on a project basis to actually tackle one one topic, you know. Mm. And, and obviously that can be very fruitful if you have the right composition and dynamics which emerge. You give them the uh, the 
authority actually to make decisions, to be self-organized, and you mm -hmm. can actually really drive success through that in an organization. Mm -hmm. Innovation culture, on the other hand, this is something which you need to establish the right environment, mm -hmm. uh, where the, which leaders need to cultivate in order to actually do encourage mm -hmm. unorthodox un thinking uh, in, in the organization. Large insurance organizations, they are still struggling with that. Okay. Uh, and, and I think what I have seen, um, a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. First of all, the best people are really tied up in the day-to-day -day business. They cannot be sure. freed up sort of for innovative uh, new solution thinking. Mm -hmm. Second, the incentive structures often mm. don't really tie together with a sort of a, a try and error, try and fail fast approach. <laughs> right. uh, and, and third, actually, insurance companies are traditionally quite risk averse when it comes to trying out new things mm -hmm. uh, and actually to trying unconventional ideas. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. They're insurance companies after all. <laughs> great, great. Well, thank you very much for talking with us for a little bit. It's been very, very interesting talking with you about insure tech. Again, it's a, a sort of emerging field over the past couple of years around fintech, and it's really interesting to see some of the ways it's very similar to fintech, and while some of the ways it's got some of its own issues and challenges that it's facing. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank, thank you, David, and uh, hope to see you soon. Excellent. And thank you for joining us as well.